This video will require you to know the series expansions of sine x, cos x and e to the x. So here they are for reference. Let's take the expansion for e to the x and substitute in i theta for x. The i is the imaginary i and the theta will later represent the angular coordinate of a complex number on the complex plane. Also, before we continue, it will help if you're familiar with how i behaves as it is multiplied by itself repeatedly. i squared equals minus 1. We know this because that's the whole point of i. Then i cubed is equal to i squared times i and the i squared part is minus 1, so i cubed is equal to minus i. i to the fourth is equal to i squared times i squared, which is 1. Then i to the fifth is equal to i to the fourth times i, which is i. You can repeat this reasoning for as long as you need, and you'll find that i to any integer power is either plus or minus 1 or plus or minus i. Look how they cycle through the permutations, 2 negative, 2 positive, and so on one with i, one without, and so on. So let's start for real. Now just for clarity we'll separate i theta to a power into i to a power times theta to that power. So for example here is i theta squared as i squared theta squared. But we know how i to a power behaves, so let's simplify those. i squared is minus one, i cubed is minus i, and so on. Half the terms now have an i and half don't, so let's separate them out into those two groups. And we might as well factorise out the i for the group that has them. And here we are. But the first group of terms is just the expansion for cos theta, and the second group of terms is the expansion for sine theta. So the complex exponential e to the i theta can be written as a trigonometric relationship. It might not be obvious why this is so important at first glance, but it really is, and this is Euler's formula.